been put out do you want to know how many downloads have happened and how these people who have downloaded the application interact now if that is your research objectives your research questions should be aligned with that objective uh, but i don't know how many graduates are here and i'm sure we all did like projects if you went to if you did go to university you did your project defense and you did your project because i just did mine today so yeah um you have your research objectives and your research questions have to provide answers to those objectives and so does the rest of your findings right so first of questions and interviews you need to align your questions to your objectives that is the first technique for user research now the next technique is card sorting card sorting is usually used after a product has been sent I'm so sorry we are on the road and like it's really my screen isn't visible okay so i'm going to share it again sorry so it's Can you see the screen? If you can, please let me know in the chat. So before I continue, right, because I've had like a very crazy week, I was not able to design the slides myself. Well, there will be a few things that I will talk about that may not be on the slide. So please just listen attentively because they are important. So card sorting, card sorting is usually used um, after you have sent out your interviews. It's another technique for user research. Now, what card sorting does is you group um, related information about your users. So um, when you have things like affinity diagrams, right? You have user empathy map. These are card sorting techniques, right? So card sorting techniques are used to group similar experiences together so that you can have a full perspective to the solution that you're about to design. So what this means is if you send out a questionnaire and your the goal of your research is to identify if people need your products. If people in the market need your products, right? So when you send this questionnaire out, you will get um, responses back right now when it's time for card sorting what it means is after you have collected those research questions so you can use um, there are different tools for questionnaires and interviews for questionnaires you use um survey monkey google form um yeah survey monkey google form i think those are the ones i use often so those are the ones in my head right and then for the interviews you could use a google doc to write down your question microsoft word to write down your questions and use any video conferencing tool to ask those questions now that is for remote user research interviews usually some companies are able to afford one-on-ones and then they send so yeah they send um they send interview questions interviewers to meet the interviewees or they send interviewees to come to where the interview is done so either ways depends on the company the budget scene and the type of research that is usually done right so the next thing is persona for card sorting after you have finished grouping those experiences let's say a lot of them feel strongly towards the use of your product like they want to download it it's going to be helpful to them but they are worried about um your subscription plan right so subscription payment is it's one of the cards that is going to be sorted so if they are talking about payment and subscription you group them together because that is similar experiences if you have um questions people talking about the interface right oh the font is too small i don't like the color blah blah blah, blah. that is similar experience so it can be grouped so if you use tool like Miro and um even Figma, you can set those cards to be different colors. So similar experiences have the same color. Another experience has another color, just like that. So that's basically what card sorting looks like. Then when you talk about creating um, empathy maps, um, the empathy map shows how users feel, how they think, what they say, and what they do. Now, these are all different reactions. Sometimes you feel 
strongly towards an app like you want you like this app you want to download it right that's how you feel but at the end of the day you download another one payday for instance does a lot of advertisements right currently they are topping and advertising for remote work and remote payment and all of those experiences that come on so they 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 do that but you can see that they are not the only fintech application available right they are not the only fintech ap application available there are several other fintech applications that probably serve the same purpose but at the end of the day people feel strongly towards payday but they end up downloading cheaper cash why probably because most of their friends have cheaper cash um on their on their phone so that is an influence for them to download cheaper cash right now let's say they feel strongly towards payday they end up downloading cheaper cash that's what they do but they think they think that abeg is better than all of them so you ne you don't understand you cannot assume as a designer you cannot assume that your users will interact with a software the same way you will sometimes um they tell us as researchers to take away ourselves like don't think you're going to use the app don't think of yourself as a user right take yourself off from the app and think about people who you're designing for for instance if you're designing a kid's app you're not a kid right so you can't even be your target audience your target audience should be kids between three to ten because that's maybe the kind of um, software you're designing and they would find it most useful so let's go to the next one heuristic evaluation this is not very common um but but is is used is used often it's used often to check um the interface how users so it's like a term um term measurement that is used to measure how users will interact with interfaces so this is where you begin to think of the size of your buttons the um since the size of your icons the locations of features because you're designing for people with accessibility needs so let's talk about left-handed people right-handed people people who have short terms those are things that people would consider but a lot of times designers just think of aesthetics and put aesthetics out but if you do user research trust me your application will not just be aesthetically pleasing it would also improve user experience and people will find it more appealing to download your product the next thing is user maps and information architecture user maps are journey maps right they show a user journey from start to finish basically what a user should do to accomplish certain tasks that's what it shows on user maps now information architecture is different from user maps a lot of time people confuse the two of them oh, victory your, your screen is your screen is not moving you're still static yeah because i'm still on this particular screen on user maps okay just try and be checking the chat so you know what people are saying okay yeah i will okay. okay please turn here turn here sorry i'm in a cab so i have to like direct as well yes yes sir so yes um user maps and information architecture are completely different things but for the purpose of our class we'll only talk about user maps usability testing is at the end so there's a filling station you enter by chelsea filling station so um usability testing is at the end of your design you send out this product to who you have designed it for to test it and give you feedback and give you feedback on the usability of it did they like it was it usable all of those things are to be considered right so let's move on sorry time is fast spent and i'm trying to get this done so yeah importance of conducting user research why are we emphasizing on user research why do we need to do this no why do we need to do user research I think we've missed the entrance of shit. Just go turn again at the train station now, at the roundabout, please. Oh. Importance of conducting user research, right? 
number one is to understand user needs this is something i've been talking about since i started do the users need this product that you're designing it's not enough to to design right do they need it Yeah, um, I will be showing, by the time we're about to start the hands-on project, I will be showing you um, visuals. Sorry, I am in transit and it's really hectic for me at this point. Right, so just bear with me. Let's understand user research. So I'll just turn by the roundabout again and go back. So next thing is it saves time and money. Instead of you to send out a product after you've designed it, you've paid your designers, content designer, um, developers to build this product, and then you send it out, and people are not downloading. There are lots of products on Apple Muse, um, on yeah, Apple Store as well as as well as Play Store that people are not downloading, but they are good products. Why? Because people don't need them. You can put out something that's amazing, but if it doesn't serve my need. Not going to download it right now also design it helps you design product people actually need so at the end of the day all of these are the same thing if you design something people need you save time and money and the only way for you to design what people actually need is to conduct user research to understand their needs right so moving on understanding user needs and behavior for you to be able to understand user need and behavior you need to conduct user research now, after you have conducted your user research, the next thing, which is very important, is to create personas. Now, a lot of time people say personas are important for the um, for stakeholders and product owners, but I don't think so. I personally feel personas are important to the design team to build a sense of empathy for the understand what these people they are designing for need right user personas are fictional characters with real user needs what is fictional about a persona is the image for instance this lady on the screen i don't know her i don't know her name but i could use her image to represent a user let's say i'm designing um an application that helps ladies track their menstrual flow right and there is a lady that is a teen like a teenager and then we have someone who has gotten to menopause right now someone who has gotten to menopause might not necessarily need a menstrual track tracking app but a young person may need it but yet i would conduct that research with a full with the full um target audience of women why because for some need, this woman might find this tool useful, but I don't know what she might use it for. The only way I would know that is to conduct a user research and send out interview form for her to fill. Moving on. Now, this lady, I don't know her name, but I might give her another name. Something that serves the purpose of what we are researching about. So, let's move on to the next thing. How to create a user persona? The fin station is in front, so you have to drive one way. Can you do that? If you can't do that, then let's go and turn at LL1, please. So how to create a user persona? Number one is to conduct a research. Conduct research with your target audience. Next thing is group your findings. Now, when you're conducting that research, it's emphasis are laid on the questions that you owe. emphasis are laid on the questions that you are asking your users because those questions will help you to identify the needs of these people is there any oh, sorry i have to check the chat as well okay <laughs> sorry i'm breathing I, I i have passed my junction like twice because it's raining heavily and it's dark and i cannot see my driver is not using his map so that's another thing so let's continue so let's say you have um a product to design um let's use a waste management product you are designing the waste management product for people in Woji to be able to easily dispose of their waste because the waste is causing problem 
on the streets, right? Now you will send your interview questions and some of the questions that you might ask uh, would be, how do you dispose of your waste, right? How often do you plan to dispose of your waste? Do you have waste like every day? Because some people don't dispose of their waste till they are filled and then they will use bean bag to pack like four others by the side before they decide that, okay, this bean is full. Others may have like two and then they dispose of it. So at what point do you dispose of your waste? That's an important question to ask. And then you ask, what time are you available at home? So if we have, if my app is working with Rewama, River State Waste Management Agency, right? If we are working with them, what it will mean is the vehicle comes around to pick the dirt. So what time would you be available to bring out your dirt and drop outside so that the car can pick it up? Those are the kind of questions I would ask. Now, when they send their responses in, I begin to group it in this way. Two genders, because I'm sure a lot of people, like male and female, dispose of waste. Even children dispose of waste, right? So I'm going to group them, gender A, male, and gender B, female. Those are my two personas. Now, in my research, I found out that a lot of them work like go to work by 7 a.m. and come back by around the clock, 7 to 8, 9, and blah, 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 blah. That's when they work, right? So I give one of my character, one of my fictional character, because I'm giving them a fictional name. Let's say the guy is Ken and the lady is Barbie. Ken works 9 to 5. I can still decide to use Barbie. Barbie works 9 to 5. The idea is the fictional names, fictional images, but real user needs. So Ken works nine to five. Just keep going, sir. Ken work works nine to five, and um, because of that, he needs the waste to be out either by seven. He will drop his waste by seven before he goes to work, or at night when he comes back. So between seven to nine, you can pick up Ken's dirt. Between nine to ten, you can pick up his dirt because at that point he's back from work, right? Now, Barbie, on the other hand, Barbie works from home. Barbie is a Texas. Barbie can bring out her waste at any time. So I understand that there's a flexibility that needs to be included. Sorry, guys. I'm close to my junction. I just want to make sure I'm right. Chelsea, yes, going. Yeah. Yes, sir. So. Um, um, Barbie is a Texas and Barbie walks from home. So Barbie can take out her dirt at any time. So that gives Barbie the flexibility to select what time works for her and say, okay, I'm setting an alarm. Rewama, anytime you're passing, just knock on my door, I'll bring my dirt, right? So those, those are real needs for fictional names of Barbie and Ken. But the problem is real to them. Their motivations are real to them um ken goes out to work he needs flexibility to bring out like he needs the um the waste management people to come out on time and pick the waste so that he can go to work he doesn't like keeping he's a clean freak he doesn't like keeping his dirt outside his house barbie on the other hand might be very flexible enough to pile her dirt because i'm, I'm home every time right so you can come anytime you like and pick my uh, my dirt so that's exactly how these things work I hope are we following so far does anybody have any question on person on this creation of it because i know it can be very difficult to do for persona so those are the needs the needs come and everything is not is not coming from anywhere it's coming from your research and the only way you can get it is by asking the right questions so then the last step is to generate the character that's by giving it a fictional name you know the age bracket for who is going to be using your product any age between so let's say your target audience um, people from 20 to 50 that stay alone and they throw away their debts all the time you don't want a community you want individuals so you can do that either ways it will reflect on your persona from your interview questions so why are personas important all these things that, that victory brown has been talking about why why do I need to do the persona? If I've collected the research, why don't I just hand over the research to my design lead and let her read it and tell me what the problem is? <laughs> no. Understanding personas 
help to improve user experience. User experience, go down, you enter your right, your left. Yes, sir. So why are personas important? They help to improve user experience. They also give a visual representation of user behavior because a visual, I, I saw someone commenting and asking that I should have used images. And yes, I agree, I should have used images. But I had like I've had a very busy week. I just didn't defense, which is no excuse. But yes, that is currently the dilemma. <laughs> so yeah, it gives a visual representation of user behavior. And just seeing yes, okay, sir, I'm here. So just giving a visual representation of user behavior to you to understand user needs, and that evokes a sense of empathy. That evokes a sense of empathy in like your design design um experience. Sorry, um I minutes off to just pay. Can someone assume a persona for a personal portfolio project? Sorry, I don't understand the question. Can you explain the question so that I understand it so I don't move on without you? While I try to pay for my ride. This person is not serious. Wow. How do you decide the pain point of the persona you are creating? Do you just pick from the numerous pain points you gather from research? Well, like I said, these pain points can differ from one per bank. Okay, please, can you just give me a second to just transfer this money? Okay, so yeah, during your research, right, you can, you, you would find out that different people have different issues. Number two could be the case of um, Ken. You see, I, it's successful now. You have my number. If you don't see, just call me. 68, Abby. I sent, yes, that's exactly what I sent. I've been debited. Okay, so during, your, during the course of your research, right, you would find out that Ken has the issue of he doesn't like his dirt being out late. He doesn't want to keep dirt in front of his house, which means the main point is I leave my house by 9 a.m., right? I want my dirt to be left, to be taken out by then. Now, Barbie's pain point might differ from Ken's own. So like I said, group similar. All you're doing is giving needs, giving. All you're doing is just sharing these needs amongst these two fictional characters, right? So, and your understanding of the pain points, you will be able to category, um, categorize each pain point for each character. So, you know which pain point to give to Ken. And you know which one to give to Barbie, <laughs> like I said. Sorry, I'm using Barbie and just. I hope the call is recorded so that you can always have access to this. I'm almost done. The most important thing why personas are created is to invoke feelings of empathy. A lot of times we design things because we do not understand the need. We do not feel sorry enough for these people to consider their problems of inclusivity and accessibility. We hear about designing for the next billion users. Next billion users are people who do not fully understand the intricacies of the internet. They do not understand how to use an Android or iPhone. Maybe they have access to button phones and um, they have access to low internet speed. So how do you consider these people's need in your design? That's the idea for a persona. And also to 
make your your um what do they call them fund the people who sponsor your product who own your product to understand why you're taking certain design decisions okay so let's move on to creating a user journey map a user journey map is a visual representation of a user's journey through your product now about this user journey map and persona i think i have articles on them but like i said i wasn't the one that designed this slide i just sent out content and if i were had designed the slide myself i would have paid attention to including oh shoot my laptop is, is getting wet outside so yeah um a visual representation of your user's journey through the product like i said the user journey map is different from information architecture. Information architecture shows the hierarchy of information, content organized on your website, right? So how do you, on the home page, what are the features or what are the pages that are attached to the home page? On the about page, what are the features that are, are um, attached to the about page? So those are like, I'm already, wait. So those are the important, um, aspects of designing a user journey map please just give me two minutes to climb up to my house so i'm going to be muted during these two minutes and if you have any questions this will be time to include them Someone is breaking up. I can't hear you. No sound. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry about that. So let's go back to the beginning. So like I said, 
the first stage for generating your user journey map is to identify your design goals. So what I said was, Ken goes to work nine to five. So he needs to subscribe for a upgrade. And the upgrade allows a personnel from the Rewama car to come down to Ken's house and pick the dirt. Because Ken is not always at home. So let's say for instance, something happens and they were not able to come before Ken leaves the house. So Ken needs them to <coughs> Ken needs them to come in and take the dirt out, right? So what that is is the design goal. Our goal is to watch Ken make a subscription for an upgrade. So what are the stages in that in Ken's journey? What are those stages that he would take? to get him to the subscription. So let's say you want to subscribe for Spotify. Spotify makes it very easy. If you're on um, free trial, they will keep announcing after three songs, please subscribe to us, subscribe to us. So you can easily just click on subscribe and then it takes you to the subscription page, asks you to enter your name, your card number, and your subscription, whatever, right? So that is the idea for a subscription. In your own app, it can go two ways. You can allow Ken to first sign in because, yes, he has to sign into the app. So you show the user signing in while they are that. So as I'm talking, I'm trying to look for something that my other students have worked on so I can show you what it looks like. So, um, so what Ken does is he signs in. He schedules a time for pickup for a personnel, and they tell him, no, Ken, you're on free, one month free subscription. You cannot request a personnel. To request a personnel, subscribe. So the next step on Ken's journey, after he has signed in, he has scheduled a pickup. Those are the stages. Remember I said, write down the stages of your user journey. So those are take. So he, he, he signs up. He schedules a pickup. He chooses the time, he requests for a personnel, and then they send him to a subscription. So your journey is going to show those stages. I'm sorry, just give me a minute to search out that particular thing because I don't have the image here. So he searches it out. And then the next thing is on the, on the user journey, it shows him signing into this um, subscription, adding his and making it a permanent, um, yes, permanent subscription. So he subscribes, and then they tell him, congratulations, you have subscribed to premium. You will get a personnel attached to your door that will come and pick in your dirt. That's an exciting user journey map. I know that this is all tales because you're not seeing the picture, and I will show you the picture in a few Let me Bobby. <clears throat> so Bobby's journey map. Now, remember, we have Ken's journey map created. Barbie's journey will start the same way. So let's say, what's Barbie doing? Barbie chose her death by herself. So what do we do to improve Barbie's experience of this, um, of this process? What can we do to improve Barbie's experience? Barbie stays at home. She can take her Do need the app? That's a good question. Do you think Barbie really needs the app? Yeah, I'm still on the same screen. I'm still on the same, the same screen. I've not moved from that screen. Hi, design cook. Is it showing? Because you said my screen is not showing. Can everyone see my screen? If you can see my screen, please let me know so I can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Like I, I asked a question, I said, um, we figured out the journey map for Ken, right? And Barbie works from home. Barbie can throw away her debt. Why do you think, what do you think that app can do for Barbie? So let's, let's, about it. let's go to the comment section. Let me know. Remember I said, we have to conduct user research so that users can use our product because they need it stays at home she can 
throw away her debt by herself. How do we make how do we make use this product? What can we do to improve her experience? Anyone take a shot at it while I open the user journey map that I was going Okay, so let me help us if we are still thinking. So because Bobby stays at home, right? She walks from home. Yes. Exactly. So there are so many things that she can do. She gets no the texts. She's always on her laptop. She might not um, have that time to pick her phone and go to the app and open the app and check. Okay, Riwama is five minutes away. Riwama is three minutes away. So we need her to get notifications enabled. So she needs notifications enabled on her laptop. She needs notifications on her Apple Watch. Notifications enabled everywhere. Now she needs to set up that notification. So that's her own journey map. Let's watch Barbie set up notifications on this Pirama app for her to get notified for whenever her pickup is ready. Does that make sense to us? this whole process we have gone through a journey together you people came with me from such a long journey so it's kind of like that experience so yes we're following right so what is she going to do she needs to sign into the app so the same process that can follow set up a pickup what whatever and then when right so she signs in she goes to settings unlike ken Ken had to go and set up a pickup first because he wanted to come and pick his debt up. But Barbie doesn't need that. She can take her debt out. All she needs to know is how far these people are away from me. So she goes to her, she goes to about and then she turns on all devices and links her devices. So that way we have made her experience using that app very awesome so she can be in a meeting just like this and then she sees a notification Rewama will be at your doorstep in 15 minutes and she's timing herself okay in like five minutes out and keep outside so that they can pick it up and then i come back inside so those are that's the reason why we're, we need to understand these people we are designing for we need to know that they need this thing that we are designing for them okay i'm really enjoying this class so i wish i, I sat down one place i started <laughs> I like to talk about experience and user research. I do, even in writing, I, I really like it. So yeah. So what, what, okay, yeah, I was going to show us something. So this is a student's work, um, someone I'm following up. So this is what a persona looks like. Now this person is designing a movie application that allows you to impute character names and then the characters will show the App would sort out uh, movies that have been, uh, sorry, actors that have been acted by this actor, and then you can select. So, in case you like this actor so much and you want to pull up on all his movies, all you have to do is impute his name, and then, whoa, a long list of um, movies that he has acted comes up. So, this is what the persona looks like. This is a fake person, not, not really a fake person, he's real, but he is not the one we gave the phone to. This is an actor, if you know him. His name is Lake Stanfield. He acts. But for our persona, also, I would encourage that if you can use stock images, do that. Because sometimes you might use image of someone that you know and just makes the whole can't see the screen. Okay, sorry. Share this tab. Let's go. Can you see it now? Are we good to go? Yes. Okay. So this is Lakeith, Lakeith Stanfield. He acts, right? But he did we did not give him the form, but this person used his image. So that's what I mean about fictional characters. His real name is Lakeith, but here he's Walter White Uchina, whether he likes it or not. Today, for this, our personal design, he is Walter Uchina. And he's 31. He's a Nigerian of his bio now the reason for the bio is just to understand who this person is like for ken his bio will be 34 years old man who works nine to five at an at a bank and he needs time to himself all of those things so those things are not formed they are gotten from your research findings 
they are gotten from your questionnaire they are gotten from your interviews right so here you say walter uchina is a single man i see he manufactures drugs he likes to watch movies in his free time but because he works at pharmacy he does not have time so you are inconsistent recommendation his friends keep giving keep giving him wrong recommendation he will watch 30 minutes into the movie he's like i'm not interested in this right but he has favorite actors and he wants to watch those movies so this app is going to be very helpful for him another thing is that he has network issues so he needs to see this list and download them when he gets to the office while he's working he's using the office wi-fi to stream these things and download them so that when he gets home he can watch it he also needs a proper download channel for movies because probably he's downloading from net ninja and after like five minutes they will shout net ninja upgrade or something and he doesn't those those things they ruin his experience so he needs an app that will improve his experience of watching movies i hope i'm making sense and i'm communicating with us right so what are his goals his goals is to reduce the time it will take to find movie First off, his friends are giving him wrong recommendations. So that even take. He's now 30 minutes into this movie and he finds out that, no, I'm not watching this. This is not my type of movie. That has taken his time away. But because he likes a particular actor, he of that actor, he will watch it, whether the movie is nice or not. So those are the biases that we have users or users have, right? So you cannot think for them except you ask them and let them tell you what they are thinking and how they are feeling and what they want to do, right? So these are, this, this, this is the interesting part of UX. You just have to think like these people, listen to their... If you think like this, then this can help solve your problem. Let me write that down. And then you begin to do your card sorting. He needs to get better recommendation for movies so one of the things that this person can add to improve this is if you watch a movie you can rate it give it five star drop a comment talk about something you like about the movie that can trigger me to watch it so maybe i don't see my favorite actor but this guy said there's so much shooting in it and all of that so he wants to watch it connect with people through movies so all of these things are gotten from your research right so you can send out questionnaires to 300 people Instead of those 300 people, some people say they are extroverts. 50 people say they are introverts. You extroverts. You give another person an introvert. Just, just like that. That's how the process goes. So, yeah, this is another person. This is another um, persona different from the first one. This is an introvert compared to him who is an extrovert. To have frustration is it takes time to watch a series. Right, almost similar to that guy. That guy it doesn't take time for him to watch series. Though. He can sit down and watch. The only thing that he, people are giving him bad recommendation. He wants to watch nice movies. So this person, if you, you can see her frustration, dread, dread to wait for subsequent seasons of series. Not a fan of movies due to their length. I stay at home does not mean I like to stay at home and watch film. But if I have time, I want to watch film, and I don't want to watch season one of alchemy of souls and then wait four months later for season two to come out no let's tell me what is happening guy now so you can see does have frustration so for this kind of person the app would generally be um showing her short movies short film films of one hour films that are completed her motivation is her personal and career grows independence She's independent. She has an independent mentality. So she will not ask you for a recommendation because you will give her a seasonal film that is not complete. So those are those are that's the interesting part about user experience. So I know I mentioned empathy map in card sorting, right? So let's do that. So this is what it looks like. What users say, they are willing to pay for the app if it's efficient. They like to watch um, binge watch shows. Yes, I'm willing to pay for the app, but how many of you are paying for Netflix? Some of you are joining your friend's account, and soon now or later, Netflix is going to remove all of you. So yes, you want good movie, but are you ready to pay for quality? So those are the things. They say you have... ...episodes of a series after work to relax. ...two episodes, right? So... These are the challenges, these are the things that users get to see and what they get to work on.
this is my user this is his user flow which is also a user right so this shows um the step to i can't remember what this was supposed to show i think for him to add movies to a list and to update profile for the lady who does not want to um so i think one of the person that does not like to watch long movies so she needs to update her profile so that netflix the app consistently shows her short films and not show her incomplete series but him he likes to download he wants to download film that he can watch later when he gets home after a long day that's how he relaxes so the user flow shows this so um the angle what i told my students is decision is represented as angle action is re represented as rectangle and then the item is an oval shape so for for you you can decide to switch things up decision action and results different different um style just something that works for you as a designer so all of them follow the same process they sign up they take the decisions either sign up with google or sign up with facebook this action this decision that they, they have taken is an action that takes them to the home screen from the home screen they can take an action to select film or share a film that they see or they can take a decision to after selecting the film watch it immediately or add to list to watch later so you can make your list public remember that that guy wants to connect with other people that's part of his pain points he needs to connect with other film watchers like him people that like action film so he shares his list this is this is my watch list this is what i like so people who are interested in those action film they come to that shared list with him and then they add their own so it's kind of like an interactive film system this was a very good but it was working on but trust designers to quit they feel that they they don't have um anything to do anymore so this is what a user flow looks like he adds to list he can create a personalized list for himself that he doesn't want to share with anybody just so that he can watch later from here you can take the action to either sign out after you're done or you can go and look for movie identification this this is why i say you impute the actor's name and then it shows you impute actor or actress and then it shows you a list of their film all of those things are important now if you see a film and you want to ask publicly what people think about this movie you can take the action to share it decision to either share it on whatsapp or twitter or copy the link and paste on your whatsapp that people should go and check this out what they think about it so basically this is what a user flow looks like it just shows a user doing to complete a task the next thing i talked about was information architecture which is a bit different from user flow. information architecture shows you the organization of content in the website so if you sign up you can either sign up with facebook or google if you go to add if you go to the home screen these are the things you will see you see profile coming soon so if you visit netflix you can see netflix has genre now playing top in your country blah blah blah, 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 blah. all that those things they have different movies and if you click on a movie you can either add to list watch later or stuff so that is the organizational con content that's the yeah the way the contents are organized on that website that's what an information architecture looks like right okay yeah so back to our class Oosh, so I stopped sharing for a minute, so I have to do that again. I hope we are following and like the class is making sense. <laughs> so importance of user journey map, it helps you to identify edge cases. So while you're doing that thing, because remember you're going to do a user testing at the end of your design. So while you're, so, so that you don't test, you don't build, test, and then I'll find out that, oh, after these users get to settings, they cannot add picture or they cannot change their name. Those, those are edge cases and they frustrate users. You, I know that there are several times we have used certain applications and we're like, what are these people doing now? How do I go from here? Oh, why did you put this thing here? That's you building your design eye and that's you being, your, you having pain points and you're, you're struggling with that, that product. If they had done a perfect or close to perfect research i'm sure they will not you would not be having those issues right so that's basically why you need to do this user journey map because now let's say on that user flow that i showed you after the guy gets to home screen there's nothing again for him to do is that i go from here 
I've seen the movie I want. There's no button for me to download. There's no button for me to add to list. This is not what I want. So that's a problem, right? That's an edge case. Edge cases are patterns where users cannot make a decision. They have hit a brick wall. The next thing is user journey map helps you to understand user behaviors and design for their moment of intent. That thing that they want to do now, think about it. Some people, it depends on how big your organization is. Some people do user journey, user flow for every step in the process. Every single step in the, the flow for it. Just that's why you can see some very long spider web kind of flow chart. That's because, yes, I'm I'm at I'm just at that screen. I've not moved from there. Screen is paused. I'm actually just at importance. When I move, it should be it should move as well. It helps you make design changes quicker when you have to iterate those things. The same reason why you make wireframes so that you don't design and add colors and then your manager is like no or that and people are like what kind of color is this what kind of logo is this and then you have to take it back again this helps you to fix experiences before the actual design of your wireframes and so that when you fix your wireframe if you see the thing is if you get it at this point if you get it at user research you have little or no problem with interface design right if you fix the journey map you fix information architecture you create your design system Trust me, the rest of it is a breeze. You just go through the process and just design. So it helps you make design changes quicker. Did my did my tab change? Diksha Kumari, you mentioned the screen was paused. I just moved to tools for creating. Okay, let's go. So tools for creating user journey maps or user flows. Um, Figma, which you have seen or you have been introduced to. Miro. Miro is a is a very good software when it comes to creating user flows, affinity diagrams, anything that has to do with visual representation of structures. Miro is also good. Asana is awesome. And so is Mural. I use Miro and Mural more than I use Figma and Asana because I do research. So most of my research are documented in Miro or Mural. So yeah, that's a very good process. Okay, so let's go ahead. After the tools, we have come to the final part of the course, which is conducting a user research and creating a persona. So I don't know how your um, bootcamp is structured. Sometimes some bootcamps will give you a task at the beginning of the class, and then each class helps you to provide solutions to that task. Let's say at the beginning of the class, you were giving a task to redesign an interface, right? So now I can now tell you, you how to create questions based on that task and create persona. So in case you don't have that, for instance, you have to create a persona, right? Um, I have an article to share. I have an article to share on creating a persona. I think that will be helpful to this class. The link we have or to the article in chat, rather. Um, so, Abi, at this point, am I going to do, would you want me to design a persona for them? What happens at this point? Because this is like the final point where they're supposed to like hands on. Okay, um, I think I'm taking over. Abi, battery is going down and is in a transit for now. So can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So um, if you have any class activity, like something to show them how it can be done by themselves, if you, you can go ahead with it. And if you have the article you said you want to share, you can drop the link right here. And also, you can drop it on the WhatsApp so that they can have access to it on the WhatsApp. And I'll make sure I pin it so that they can get it anytime they want it to. Thank yeah, you very I much. Love to do, I would have loved to do a hands-on um, presentation in persona right but there is actually no problem per se for us to okay see. so um that might be a challenge but i want to share something right now which might okay. help be of help okay okay so 
okay on the whatsapp group okay i'll send it to ab and he'll send it on the whatsapp group this is a concise article on step-by-step -step process on creating a user persona it's i'm sure at the end of that article you would be able to create a persona trust me <laughs> um there is no actual problem or task to do so designing a persona might be a bit tr tricky okay because there is no research there's no research question there is nothing right i i promise you that the article is full on i will help you to design your persona so yeah what's next? okay thank you very much um Ms. Victor Brown, and you really talk a lot about today. And I hope everyone has learned different things from what you said. Um, as we start being one of the most essential parts in UI, US design, or US design in particular, research is essential for everything you are doing. Because that, if you're not doing research, that means there's no difference between you and someone who is only doing US, UI design, that only design interface, beautiful interface that's concerned with designing beautiful interface. But when you're doing research, you're backing it up with research. That is what makes you US designer. So I know more, we don't have much time and um, we don't have a question to work on as a problem in this class today. And due to the technic issue, technical issue we have, we are really sorry about that. But if you have question after this class, you can drop it on the WhatsApp. For those who could not reach us um, through the WhatsApp, you can follow through um, Friends of Figma, our chapter page, send a mail to us and we can reply to your questions. And if anyone has a question, I'm available in the WhatsApp always to attend to our question. So thank you, Vitri Brown. And you can follow her on Twitter, yeah, and you. Um, you can follow her on her Twitter and on LinkedIn. She's there anytime. Mostly she's open to questions. She's somebody she's very accessible, somebody like when it comes to helping people, she can help on those, on those kind of questions. And then if you want to follow Friends of Figma, Portacourt, and don't forget, we say use the hashtag which you post in the group on Twitter, please. It's very important. This is what um, the Figma will use to track our events. This is very important because more things will be coming up. The more they see that we do this event, more things they will bring for us. So please, the hashtag, use the hashtag, post about this event, this bootcamp, post about what you've learned, what you've understand. Even if there are things you don't understand, just try to reach out to me. I can explain to you and you can post about it also. Please, that is how we work on this. Thank you very much for all who make chance and we are sorry for the technical issue. So if we have a link to drop for tomorrow, we'll drop it as early as possible. Please be, keep your notification on and we'll get back to you on anything we need to get back to you. Thank you very much for coming and please prepare for tomorrow. Wonderful. We have a nice speaker coming up tomorrow. Is somebody you would like to meet in person if you hear from him tomorrow. Thank you very much, everyone. And this will be the end of today's um, section. If you have anything, just come to the WhatsApp and drop. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Choo, 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 choo.